sodium carbonate, when mixed with certain ratios of water, will uh, absorb carbon. So that it would prevent the um, carbon dioxide from getting into the atmosphere and take the fossil fuel emissions and prevent it from getting out into the atmosphere. Because you're trying to extract the carbon, yeah, which um, is harmful to the environment. It seemed to me that it was a perfect way to let students, high school students in particular, be able to explore controlling different variables. So the five range. So I think it's working. <laughs> okay. So you heat up, you heat up a piece of food, and you know the top is hot, but the bottom is so cold. It's the same thing with carbon sequestration. CO2 goes on top of the solution, but the bottom is still not used up. So to maximize cold sequestration, uh, you turn it. So one of the keys to making inquiry-based projects work is having uh, low-cost materials. So we have the standard lab equipment. We did most of the early steps by mass measurements before we moved into the pH testing. And so then uh, we had some tubing, cable ties, silicone caulking. I was the chemical engineer, so I went ahead and started by calculating the um, optimum value for calcium in the water. By varying different factors, students can explore how to optimize their design. Each group has four members. There is a chemical engineer, chemical researcher, thermochemistry researcher, and mechanical engineer. So the chemical engineer is responsible for developing the mixture between the sodium carbonate and water. There's an optimum mixture between those two. So they conduct a test to figure out what that optimum is. They created graphs to display that information and then use that information to then draw conclusions on uh, what the best ratio is. The chemical researcher worked on the measurement task of the, the carbon dioxide. Now, I know it might be easy enough to purchase some carbon dioxide meters. We didn't happen to have any, so we used the reaction of carbon dioxide with uh, water that makes carbonic acid, and we had pH meters on hand. So we measured the pH in order to find the carbon dioxide. One is after we put in the sequestration. Okay, so then the C is control. Yeah. Right. And then, so do you see a color difference? Um, slightly. This one's like a darker orange. This one's a yellow orange. So that's good because you want this one, the control, to be darker. This one has more CO2 than this one. Although that was kind of the harder way to do it, it ended up being a very uh, useful thing because it, it introduced concepts of acids and base. It allows students to explore this idea of a calibration curve. And we're going to see the color change. Cool. What we've done to the wall, it's just uh, 20 milliliters of water indicator solution and the, the color change is going to indicate whether it gets more acidic or basic based on how much carbon dioxide we put into it. The thermal chemistry researcher was involved in thermodynamics of the reaction. So in order to optimize the reaction, there's an optimum temperature at which it happens. And so this allowed us to really explore the relationship of energy and activation energy and uh, many different variables and incorporate that into this project. And to top it off, instead of just heating it up with a hot plate, uh, we wanted this to be for a demonstration purpose, so I had them heat it up using various salts. So they had to measure out and create graphs showing what temperature produced the most optimum result for carbon sequestration. The temperature in here is pretty warm because at a higher temperature the, the sequestration can have optimal results. And what's under this is um, a liquid that is at about 70 degrees to make the process easier. Tubes over here, so you put in your hot water to keep the, um, the, the whole thing warm and so you have oil in the bottle to keep it warm. We heated it up by just having the natural heat of the Na2CO3 with water. And then the fourth job, the mechanical engineer, the primary job was to construct a device. And so this device would pull together all the different factors 
Uh, also, they had to measure the optimum time for the reaction to happen. So once they figure out all these factors, they have to work together, applying their knowledge of chemistry, of materials, and what materials might conduct heat or insulate heat, uh, how density of carbon dioxide, does it flow up, does it flow down, all these various factors from the whole year of chemistry start coming together as they design their product. Yes. We're going to add, yeah. add these nets into the Gatorade bottle. We're going to pump in CO2 oh, 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 over here. And then we're going to have a tube on the bottom picking up the fresh air that's, uh, that has no CO2 in it. And we're going to pull it out and then put it into a pH indicator to show if it has high CO2 levels or low CO2 levels. So why did you design it that way with the netting? Uh, we used it this way to increase the surface area for it. So I'm curious uh, why you designed it with the uh, with the can instead of a plastic bottle like a lot of other groups. It absorbs. It, it takes in the heat way quicker, and plus the uh, carbonate and water by itself already goes pretty quick. Did you put insulation in this uh, as well? Yes, we did. That is to keep the heat in. Keep the heat. Frustration. And then you can start the program. So lucky. I just the pump on. The screen tells you it's pumping gas. It processes the carbon for the amount of time you set it for. Pumps the gas again. So you have your pump. Could you point to the pump for me? So that's pumping. And then after that it reads the pH and then it's supposed to calculate the carbon, uh, amount of grams of carbon. And then finally we could measure the efficiency. So what we did is we had a, a control and a test or a sequestered sample. And so they would run the control through their device, but not sequester it. And then they would pump it into a, to water so that we could measure the pH. And then they would do the same thing for their sequestered, except now they have the sodium carbonate mixture in there, heat it up and do all of that. From there, they can take it one step further. We can calculate the carbon credits that might be uh, possible in a business type scenario, or if it was working uh, in a power plant scenario, maybe sequestering the carbon produced at a factory or power plant. There are a lot of solutions to taking in carbon dioxide. One of the many solutions is planting trees. But uh, this project is aimed at looking at how we could uh, develop a, a process that could be used with manufacturing or power plants uh, to where the exhaust could be uh, sequestered. One of the most rewarding things about doing this type of work is letting students see how we can apply our knowledge that we've learned to find real solutions to big problems.